Hello and welcome to the 60 second tutorial in the Copas 2D JS version 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at replacing the scene. We'll be using source code from the 61st tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. Copas 2D JS provides us with all the desired functionality for manipulating scenes. In this tutorial, we will cover how to replace a scene with another scene. Real life example of this could be when clicking a play button on a main menu, for example, and that goes to the game scene. You don't want the main menu to exist anymore, so you get rid of the main menu and you add the game scene. It's, it's sort of essentially like you're popping a scene, then you're pushing a scene onto the stack, but you can just do it using the one uh, method, um, which is called run scene, but it basically replaces the scene. In previous versions of Cocos 2D JS and Cocos 2D X as well, it was called replace scene, and run scene did something else, but run scene and replace scene have been combined now, so it is run scene as you will see in a moment. You might think, don't you ever want to go back to the main menu? And naturally, you would. But the thing is, you'll just push that scene or replace the, or you'll just replace the game scene with the main menu because unless you have something on the main menu that is happening that you don't want to get rid of, and uh, you just want to hold the execution, you you just replace it. And for the most part, for most games, that is the case. So let's go ahead and open up our project. Now open up our app.js. All we're going to do is this line here, let's say cc.director.pushscene, we're just going to replace that with run scene. So let's just go through it. We create our scene, uh, so new hello world scene 2, and then we do cc.director.run scene, then we specify the scene. In theory, you could just put this bit of code in here instead of creating a new variable. We just prefer it this way, but either way is fine. So let's just save this. And if we open up terminal, chain directory to our project directory, run the project. Okay, so we have it loaded. If I click push, it may look similar to push scene, but what happens when I click pop? It stopped, the frame rate has stopped, and the reason it stopped is because it's crashed. And you might think, we don't want this. Uh, obviously in the real game we wouldn't, but the reason it's crashed is because if, if I open up app2.js In the app.js we do the run scene method which basically gets rid of the hello world scene and replaces it with the hello world scene too. So if we pop this scene off, which we do when we click the pop button, it no longer exists anymore. Obviously what you can do is just replace this with a replace, or I mean a run scene method or a push scene method, because otherwise you only want to use the pop scene if you have a scene below the current scene in the stack. But I'm going to leave that uh, as a task for you. Also, another little task for you to do is create a bunch of scenes for the flow of a game. So, main menu, game scene, pause scene, and anything else you can think of. And implement all the scene functionality that we've learned over the past few tutorials to make them flow using menu items from one scene to another. Uh, using menus which we covered earlier in this series. Obviously, certain menus will need a pop, certain menus will need to run, and certain menus will just need to be pushed onto the stack. I'm going to leave that up to you. When we now know how to push, pop, and replace scenes, but they're looking a little static at the moment. So in the next tutorial, we will cover scene transitions to make it a little more dynamic and lively. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at .co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.